My name is Savannah Pinto. For a ninth grade oral history project, I chose to interview Steve Friedman. I decided to make Mr. Friedman the subject of my interview because of his knowledge of the Vietnam War. Over the course of this video, I would like to give you some background of the Vietnam War and explain what I learned from this interview. Vietnam is a nation in Southeast Asia on the eastern edge of the Indonesian Peninsula. And in 1949, Emperor Bo set up the new state of Vietnam, while Ho Chi Minh took over Rwanda and declared a democratic republic of Vietnam with himself as the president. While both sides wanted a unified nation, Minh wanted communism, while Bo wanted to keep close economic and cultural ties to the West. This was an ongoing debate for decades, but later between the Northern and Southern armies, it created an armed conflict, also known as the Vietnam War. It officially began in 1954 and was long and costly. It was fought between the communist government of North Vietnam against South Vietnam, who allied with the United States. One of the biggest events to happen in the Vietnam War was the My Lai Massacre on March 16, 1968. It was horrific as American soldiers brutally killed unarmed civilians. More than 500 people were killed and a number of young girls and women were raped and mutilated before the killing. U.S. Army officers covered it up for almost a year, but it was later reported to the American press, which sparked an outrage. This also led to further dividing of the United States over the Vietnam War. This is only one of the many traumatic events that happened over the course of the Vietnam War. By 1969, more than 500,000 U.S. military personnel were stationed in Vietnam. And here is a story told from Steve Friedman, whose brother was sent overseas to fight for our country. Steve Freeman, the brother of Bruce Freeman, had the experience of getting drafted into the United States military, getting denied, and dealing with the anticipation of waiting for his brother to hopefully come home. Before the war broke out, he was single and working as a foreman and mechanic at a sweater mill. Later, as the war grew closer, he wanted to get engaged, but didn't know if he was going to serve or not. We should be doing this and that and everything. But as time went on, I thought it was a waste, a waste of a lot of lives, truthfully. Steve Friedman got a letter one day advising him to come down to take a physical to see if he was eligible to serve in the war and additionally having to take a mental health test. He got a note from his doctor telling him that he has multiple outdoor allergies. I think they were taking people with flat feet, like bad posture. I figured I'm going into the service for a couple of years. Although this was not the case at all. For the final decision, he went to one of the military doctors in a corpsman. They looked at his doctor note describing his allergies and cut him loose. The reason being that if he had developed asthma or a type of bronchial disease, the government would have to give him a disability for the rest of his life. And at the time, there's no big rush in drafting people into this war. Although, on the other hand, his brother, Bruce Freeman, volunteered into the Marines. Mr. Freeman talked to his brother to try him getting out of going into the service. I didn't want him to go into service. It was no great thing. Uh, but your Uncle Bruce, he wanted to go into service. He even suggested going into the Navy or Air Force instead, a less risky position, he thought. His parents were anxious and afraid for him also, although his brother had his mind set and entered the Marines. He wanted an MSC duty. Well, you had to re-up for another two years. Bruce Friedman went to Japan and Vietnam. During his time in Japan, he was an MP, and he then was sent to Vietnam, where his job was to put out fires. Although, many people already had this duty, so he was subjected to rescue wounded soldiers out of helicopters. They gave him duty on helicopter duty, bringing out wounded soldiers. And he does not talk about it, because it was probably a very trying experience for him was here you're seeing all these soldiers that are coming out of battle with all these gruesome wounds and everything he spoke to me about it once that he was on the helicopter ships bringing out wounded and that's all he said he doesn't talk about the, the service like that because it is bothering when he returned home he was fine he even loved the marines he came out very gi as people would say however as time went on and after his second year of serving, he wasn't so fond of fighting. Therefore, when he got home, he was very happy to see his family. He would get transported from time to time back to the base Quantico, and he would drive back home to see his family. 
Mr. Friedman was very excited when his brother got out with no wound. Glad he came back home in one piece, he said. He only told his family that he was in Vietnam when he came home. Bruce never got to contact his brother or any other family members, and they never wrote letters to each other, so they never knew where he was. The brothers, Bruce and Steve Friedman, both had two very different experiences, but left with the same mentality of the Vietnam War. Towards the end, it was a waste of life on both sides. You know, it was a war is a horrible thing, and people come home half a person without arms or legs, and for what? My grandpa, Steve Friedman, was more of a war hawk. But once the war kept dragging along and more people were getting killed, he started to think it was a waste of lives on both sides. As we came out of it, what we gain? Everybody said if you let the communists get a foothold in Vietnam, it will only go to the next country and the next and the next. So we had to go and help them. But it didn't make a difference. You killed a lot of people. A lot of American boys came back maimed, lost of arms, legs, eyes. A lot of them shell-shocked. On April 30th, 1975, North Vietnam captured Sejon and South Vietnam fell to the reign of Ho Chi Minh. U.S. troops were already withdrawn in 1973 under President Nixon. In 1976, Vietnam unified as a Socialist Republic of Vietnam. The warfare destroyed the country's infrastructure and economy. On both sides, there are 2 million civilian deaths and an estimated 200 to 250,000 South Vietnamese soldiers that died in the war. 58,200 American soldiers were killed or missing during the war. In memory of the soldiers who fought, in 1982, there was a Vietnam Veterans Memorial built in Washington, D.C. The U.S. alone spent over $120 billion for the Vietnam War, and it also split the nation into two. Overall, three million people were killed due to the Vietnam War, and the most controversial question still remains. Was the Vietnam War worth all the lives that were lost?